Hey, hey, hey. Let's look at our new objectives. We are doing significance tests or hypothesis tests, depending on what you're going to call it, about the population. So in other words, we're looking at our mu. Okay, so now normality you know is different than it is for the P. So as you look at this, let's just remind ourselves. Here, when sigma is known, we have the T distribution. It could be approximately normal. It's coming from a normal prop, um, population. Also, we have our CLT. Also, remember here, if we have raw data, we must check our graphs. And as I talk about checking the graphs, I mean a box plot, a histogram, a normal probability plot. And um, remember, that's applicable whether it's T or Z. But what about specifically when we have here, this is when sigma is unknown. And when a sigma is unknown, we're talking about a T distribution. I'm just making sure that you know this is applicable when it's known or unknown. Here, this is with a T distribution that we must look at, look for skewness. If they say it's skewed, rather, that's okay as long as there's no outliers and we have a large population. Or, let me say it the correct way, we have a large sample. So, the rules are no different, and turn to the very back of your booklet, the last green page. This just reiterates exactly what I just said. Okay, your conditions and assumptions, you know it's SRS, the normality is what I was just referring to, and of course, here the 10% rule. Okay, and as I look at this right here, and that was for the Z test. For the T test, let's check that out. Here... The con um, conditions are the same. Here we're looking at our normality. But in addition to that, remember with the T, you can have a little skewness, but there cannot be any outliers. Now on that chart, I showed you the equation for the test statistic for the others. others as I was, I'm sure you saw it, I mean, as I was looking at or showing you the normality. Okay, we know, generically speaking, it's a statistic minus the parameter over the standard deviation of the statistic. So the question is, what is the standard deviation of the statistic? Remember, when sigma is unknown, and that's your T distribution, here is going to be the standard deviation of X over um, the square root of N. But when, when sigma is known and it's a Z distribution, it's just sigma divided by the square root of n. Now, we've done T distributions before, but now it's slightly different because what we need to do now is determine how we use it. How do we find the p-value? Okay, so let's just remind ourselves first of how we find it for the Z. The Z distribution, remember, the probability is inside of here, okay, and what we do is we our test statistic will slide down and over because the probability is inside the meat of the chart. But for the T distribution, check out what I've said here. You have your um, test statistic in here and you slide up to see your probabilities. So pull out your um, T chart and look at what I'm saying here. Your test statistic is in here and we slide up to see the probability. So, and of course, with the understanding that our degree of freedom is over here on the side. So, let's do this example right here. Okay, so, here, let's say we did our math, we did the test statistic, and we found it to be 1.8, um, and our sample size was 12, so our degree of freedom is 12 minus 1, which is 11. So, now let's look over at our chart. So what we do is we find our degree of freedom, which is 11, and we slide over until we see approximately 8. And I think we'll all agree 8 is in between here somewhere. Now what you do is you slide up 
and look at the probabilities that surround that 8. So you can see that the probability here is going to be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.025, which means that is what our p-value is going to be. It's going to be between these two. I think you'll all agree it appears that it's actually closer to this, but if you say it is between 0 0.05 or slightly less than 0 0.05, that'll be fine, which is going to become problematic because if our alpha level is 0 0.05 and it's close to that one, how are we going to reject or fail to reject? So it could be a problem in this case. And in a case like that, when our p-value is so close to our alpha, we cannot make a really a really legitimate decision. So the convincing evidence or strong evidence, all those disclaimers, nope, nope, nope. One disclaimer you could say that would be accurate is that we need to take some more samples because this is really close to call. Kind of like what's happening right now with the presidential um, candidates. Okay, next, let's see what our different graphs look like. Well, this looks, if we go back to our prior set of notes, this looks no different than it did before, except now instead of using P, we're going to be using mu. So right here, you can see that this is mu is less than, this is mu is not equal to, and this is mu is greater than. Yeah, they're supposed to be symmetric, but obviously not. Okay, now here... I want you to see something that's kind of weird. If I get a left tail and whatever that test statistic is, and honestly, let's say the example that I had before, that it was a negative 1.8. Well, I'm going to use the absolute value of that. So that is why the probability of t is less than is the same as the probability of t is greater than because whatever that value, so I'll say it again because I don't know at what point it cut off. Oh, i got to pay more attention to that screen. Okay, so as I was saying here, okay, the probability of less than is going to be the same as the probability of, of the T being greater than. So the thing is, is that this is the same. It's because of the symmetry idea, and the reality is if you look at your T distribution, what do they show you? They show you, first of all, you only have one chart not two like you do for Z, and you notice what's happening here, it is this tail right here, okay, only. You don't see any shading over there. So that's why when you find, if you have less, whatever that is, it's going to be the same of that because of the symmetry ideology. Now, let's continue to take some more notes. So as we look at this, when we have a two-sided test for the p-value, you do what you always did before, calculate the p-value. When it's, when it's two-sided or two-tailed, we double it, and then we compare the alpha. Okay, so. And please remember, this is when you double it when it's done by hand. And that is an H. Now, if you're wondering what is the difference between a two-tailed test and a confidence interval. And I, I wanted to mention this before. I think it stopped taping. Okay, Doceri just cut off of me, so I don't know what's happening if it stops. So what I was saying is that I wanted to mention this before, but I don't really think I did. The significant test gives us evidence um, whether something is the same or different about our claim. That's what a significance test is. Remember, it's also called the hypothesis test. But it gives us no idea of what the mu actually is. If we want what the mu is, or what does the thing say? We are 95% confident that the true mean value will lie within this interval. It won't give us exactly, but at least it'll give us an interval of the acceptable mu. And what do we what are we doing when we do that? We are looking for a confidence interval. Now, I just wanted to because I can see you would look at it and go, Miss Yarbrough, that T, 
and that, that, two, that two-tailed T and that confidence interval, they look the same, so what's the difference? Well, again, one is you're testing a claim, either that it's the same or different, and then confidence interval, we're trying to find a true mean value, at least a, a range of acceptability. So now, a couple minutes ago, I mentioned the idea of using a T distribution, so let's go for it. So here I'm looking at my HO. My HA is that it's going to be greater than. I have an N of 75, which means my degree of freedom is 74. Here I have a test statistic of 2.33. So before we go to the actual chart, remember we're sliding down to a degree of freedom. And I'm going to say for this one, this is approximate also. Okay, and we're going to slide over to find 2.33, and that's approximate. So degree of freedom, I'm sorry, of 74. Here, this is going to be approximate your test statistic. Okay, because we aren't going to find this exact value. And then we've got to slide up, and then we slide up, and the highlighted area is going to be our p-value. So, let's do it. So as you see here, this is 60 and 80. We're going to slide over to 2.3. Looks like it's about there. Okay, we said 74. So I want to go with, you can go with, you can get away with either of these. But as you look at it, this is 2.374, 2.390. So you can see why you can get away with either of them. And as you do it, I'm going to slide up and say that my p-value is approximately 1.01. .01. And in a case like this with our unknown alpha level with an alpha of 0 0.05 and that p-value right here of 0 0.01, it would be safe to, let me show this on, it would be safe to reject the HO. Now, if it was an alpha level of 0, 0,1, we're going to have to say redo it so close to call. Okay, so now let's look at this. We've got n equals 10, so our df is equal to 9. Here, you see this is what I was talking about. t is going to equal a negative 0.51. We're going to take the absolute value of that, which means it's going to be 0.51. And remember, the reason is, find for me on the t-distribution a negative anything in terms of our um, test statistic, because remember, this is your test statistic. So as I look at my degree of freedom, which is 9, here, and then I slide over. And I'm looking for 0.51. I'm going in this direction and going, oh, my numbers are getting bigger. Okay, so I've got to go in the other direction. Oh, my numbers have got to be getting smaller. I don't even see a number as low as 0.51, which means that my p-value is going to have to be what? Greater than 0.25. Okay, so here my p-value is going to be greater than 0.25. If your question is, can we come up with a more precision, not with using the chart. Okay, so if I compare my p-value, okay, to my alpha level, we're going to obviously fail to reject the HO. We're going to fail to reject the HO. Just add it what we drew, what we figured out over here. And like I said, this p-value of this 0.51 is here somewhere. And it's there somewhere. And the bottom line is we don't know what it is. We just know what is greater than. And that would be totally 100% acceptable. Now, I want to leave these so that we can... Um, do it together tomorrow. I will see you guys.
Have fun with your homework. Yeah, Yarbrough fun. What a joke. Have a good evening, guys. Bye-bye.